Welcome to the Encourage live chat of the day. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Erin, Erin Mooring from Home with the Boys. And um, we're just going to have a little chit chat as we wait for people to join us here. So just chime in on the comments when you're here to let us know. Uh, I'm here in Nebraska on a beautiful day. Um, it has The weather's been kind of weird here. We've had like super high winds and but it's been pretty mild the last um couple weeks even and tomorrow we're supposed to get hit with snow again <laughs> so i'm just enjoying whatever nebraska weather has to give us today and today it's going to be another like 50 degree day and we'll enjoy that before the snow sets in again so as you're joining us here just let me know where you're joining us from and um, I'd love to know what the weather's like where you are. I sound like Al Roker or something. The weather in your neck of the woods, how is it? Um, I uh, have to tell you a little funny story before we dive into all of this as people are joining us, but um, my morning, um, this is kind of like a typical Thursday morning for me, is get everybody out of bed and get going. I have three boys and two of them are in school right now. So get everybody going and um, get them, get the older two off to school. And then the youngest and I, uh, the youngest just turned five, uh, we head to the Y. Uh, I'm training for my third marathon right now. So I go to the YMCA two days a week to have childcare for him so I can get my run in. And we head there, get my run in, come back, shower, and all of that. And <laughs> as we're getting set up for this, I was trying to get some stuff done at home and it's like 10 minutes to go and I'm like, I need to blow my dry, blow dry my hair. <laughs> so 10 minutes before I joined you, I'm blow drying my hair, which is, takes a long time. But anyways, that's how my crazy morning was. Anybody else have a crazy morning trying to get ready for something or getting somewhere? Well, if you're, if you're joining us and you have a funny story about your morning, um, go ahead and leave a comment for me and hopefully I can see it and, and uh, sympathize with you and get everything going. So I see a few friends joining us in here. Um, anybody have crazy windy weather where you are? We lost our grill cover that was fastened to our grill on Monday night. Like it was Velcroed on, it was under an overhang and we lost the grill cover sometime in the night because the winds were so high. I mean, like craziness. It's it's very weird. Um, anyways, I uh, um, I'm seeing Colorado and North Carolina. My oh Miami Beach. Oh my goodness, that does sound really lovely right now. But I see you guys are having wind also. So I think I saw Michigan's basketball team's plane was blown off of the runway yesterday because of these winds. I think that's a little excessive, don't you? Like. I'm done with the wind for a while. <laughs> so anyways, we've been chit-chatting a little bit, but um, I just wanted to tell you a little bit more about myself before we dove into this fabulous book we're going to talk about that I was super honored to be a part of. So like I said, my name's Erin Mooring. I blog at homewiththeboys.net, and I already mentioned I have three boys, so that's where the name comes from. I first started it um, when I quit teaching to stay home with two boys at, at the time, two of them, and um, I, just sharing our life and things I love, and it's kind of evolved into doing fashion and fitness and uh, family stuff and our faith, sharing a little bit of everything. That's my personality. Um, hello! Oh, look at all these friends joining. It's so fun. Um, I, if I love something, I talk about it on my blog or on social media. And if you want to find me on any social media, I'm home with the boys. In, you know, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of those. It's just home with the boys, so that's pretty easy. Instagram's my favorite, so if you want to connect with me there, that's where I spend most of my social media time. Um, oh, a former teacher, yes. Oh, God, Texas sounds like Nebraska right now. Warm, cold, Mary, yeah, four boys. Solidarity, sister. Um, so uh, I write at homewiththeboys.net. Um, I have been married to my husband for 
this year it'll be 14 years and um, he's a physician and um, I stay at home and write and speak and um, I'm one of the co-founders of the Mob Society and Raising Boys Ministries. So if you're a boy mom at all, we'd love to have you join us on the Mob Society, Mothers of Boys. See what we did there? Um, we, have a, we have a lot of fun and talk about a lot of things about faith and raising boys over there. So we'd love to have you join us. Um, and I love to talk, if you can't tell, and I love to write, and I love to run, which is a new development in the last few years. Um, I'm training for my third marathon. Just ran a 10K this weekend that was all leprechaun themed and Irish. If you can't tell, I really like green and March is my favorite month. So this is my birthday month, St. Patrick's Day, our youngest turns five. It's pretty much the best month of the year. So my husband and I even started dating on St. Patrick's Day in Dublin. So. You know, there's just a million reasons to love it. So, um, and I really love popcorn. And if I want any kind of treat, it's stovetop popcorn popped in oil and then real butter and salt on it. Just nothing beats that. So, anyways, so we've talked about that <laughs> about me enough, and I love seeing you guys chime in with where you are and boy moms and former teachers and. And all of those things and um, I love oh no somebody doesn't like March because of it's so windy yeah I agree I do I actually spring is my least favorite season but March is my favorite month but it has nothing to do with the weather so all right well let's get back to um, craving connection um, if you've been around encourage at all this month then you know that this is well this year really, because this book came out a couple months ago. Um, but Craving Connection is a book that was published by Encourage uh, to not only share about friendships between women, but also to challenge you in how you approach friendship and um, what God says about it, and um, really how to be a better friend and also let people be friends to you, which actually sounds kind of weird, but I think sometimes we as women have trouble letting people help us or letting people be there for us because it makes us look needy. And God says, no, I'm here. I'm sending these people you, to you for a reason to be there for you. So um, not only giving friendship, but accepting friendship. And um, my chapter in the book um, is about halfway through and it's called Longing for Loyalty. And um, I'm gonna start off um, just the verse that we focused on for that chapter um, was about Ruth and Naomi. And um, I've always thought of it as a family-related story. Um, I, I feel like it's centered around marriage and um, you kind of get the feeling that there's some family obligation there and everything. But writing this chapter for the book helped me look at it in a different way. Um, it helped me look at it um, in the vein of friendship. And um, Ruth and Naomi um, were family by marriage uh, um, for a while until um, death took that away from them. And there was... Uh, um, there was an opportunity at that moment where uh, Ruth could have left Naomi and um, another one of Naomi's stepdaughter, or not step, sorry, daughters-in-law, <laughs> um, Orpah, decided to leave her and um, Ruth could have done the same thing. And it actually probably would have been a lot easier for her um, to stay with her people and all of that. And this is where I see it turn from just a family obligation to a friendship because Ruth felt a deeper connection to her that went past just marrying her son. And she chose to be loyal to Naomi. And um, that's really, really powerful to me. It's It goes beyond, you know, she was leaving her homeland and... Um, 
she didn't have Facebook <laughs> to keep up with those people. There was no easy way to just be in touch with um, the, fa the family you came from and all of that. But um, she knew that God had something for her. I just believe that, that she knew that her loyalty to Naomi would be a blessing to Naomi. And I have to believe she had hope that it would be a blessing to her as well. Um, and uh, as I was thinking about that story, I thought about a lot of how friendship has worked in my life. Um, I have a lot of friends who have lived in the same place their entire lives. They grew up there. Um, they um, went to school there. They stayed around there for college and they have never left. And when I think of that, I think that they have a, um, a really strong sense of loyalty to the people they've grown up with, that they've done life with forever and all of that. Um, but that's not my story. My story involved moving. Um, I moved to a different state when I went to college and um, moved to a different city um, when we went into residency. And um, so loyalty for me has looked a little bit different rather than being in one place and um, being with the same people throughout my life. We're not in the same place all at the same time. I haven't lived in the same city as my family um, in 18 years. We're still very close and we're not that far away. We see each other all the time, but um, but having moved, that changes the dynamics of what friendships look like um, and what, what loyalty looks like. And I had, um, when we moved, uh, let's see, that would be five years ago now, um, we left a place we had lived for 13 years um, between college and getting married and and um, having babies. We lived there for 13 years and we got to be very close with our church family and with our friends there. We had babies at the same time and they were growing up together and all of that. And um, our friends really truly felt like family. And, um, and then you move and we only moved an hour away, but it really kind of shook up what my friendships had looked like from that point. When you go through a season of life where you're with your friends and doing the same things and then you're not in the same place anymore, friendship looks a lot different. And I'm really thankful for a couple friends that I'm still in touch with constantly. Um, a couple of you are watching, you know who you are. <laughs> but, um, but a lot of the people that we were very good friends with in that place, um, the friendships didn't stick and it's, I really don't feel like there's anybody at fault in that, but, um, it did start to have me think about what loyalty looks like and, um, is it location based? Is it, you know, proximity based that we are, we're here in the same place, so we're going to be loyal to each other. But if that changes, we're not, is it based on seasons in our lives? And sometimes that is. Sometimes we have a season of a life where we can show more loyalty to a friend than other seasons where life um, gets busy. Um, but it had me questioning, what does that look like? What is, um, how do we stay loyal in our lives that are always changing, that are, you know, we're shifting into different seasons of having babies or kids in sports and things get busy or you move to a different place or you start a different job and you're not with those same people all the time. What is God calling us to in that loyalty? Um, and honestly, it can hurt when you, when you don't see that loyalty through those changes of life. Um, I, kind of felt like the bottom dropped out a little bit on some friendships that I thought were very, very close when we moved. And um, I thought, really, I thought those were a lot stronger than, than what they were. But thankfully during that time, God also showed me that it doesn't have to be every single friend in my life that's a loyal one. Um, and if we, if we did that, <laughs> it might, we might be stretched a little bit thin. And uh, I was able to reflect then um, in that period of hurt and, and kind of loss of those close friendships on which friendships he was calling me to be really loyal in.
And you'll notice in the story of Ruth and Naomi that she followed Naomi. Like, it, I'm sure there were lots of different things tugging at her of how she could have reacted in that situation and who she could have chosen to be with. Um, but I believe God called her to go with Naomi because she knew there was some kind of blessing she could be and blessing in it for her. And she was drawn to the faith and, and the life that Naomi had led. And we see that God blessed her for that, um, in, in finding her, um, a new husband and, and a life and ultimately being in the, in the line of, of Jesus and the genealogy back there. So, um, my chapter of the book, oh, and I, I want to say that I wanted to share that story Let me before I move on. I wanted to share that story of um, moving and, and feeling that loss and hurt because I don't, um, I want this chapter to not only be for the people who have loyal friends to think about how thankful for they, are, they are for them, um, but also for those of you that are hurting right now um, to tell you that I've been there and there's hope and I, I believe that God calls us to to run to him when we're feeling hurt by the people in our lives um, to know that he hasn't forgotten us and um, both Naomi and Ruth were going through losing their husbands and losing everything you know for Naomi it was also losing her son sons um, you know so like lots of loss and hurt going on and and God showed her that she did have someone there with her um, to show that she wasn't alone. So um, whether you have loyal friends right now or you're looking for them or you're hurting because someone hasn't been as loyal as you thought, this chapter is really for, for all of that, for all of that. And um, I love you guys are sharing your stories about moving and picking up and, and leaving friends and feeling this, um, this hurt and I am praying over all of that and we will pray at the end so keep telling me your stories because I want to pray specifically for you if you're hurting in that that you would find someone that God would first of all heal that hurt for you and that he would put those new people in place for you um, to find that loyalty and friendship which brings me back to the chapter um, I shared about um, my oldest friend, no, I don't mean oldest in age because I'm actually a couple weeks older than her, but um, my friend Jana, we have been friends since second grade. And in the chapter, I share about how our friendship evolved over the years. We went, um, we went to elementary school, middle school, and high school together, um, but we weren't always the best of friends during that time. We were always kind of there. I'm, I don't know if any of you else, else of you know how that feels, but Jana was always a friend that even if we weren't like hanging out all the time, I knew like, okay, she's still there and we are in classes together and all of that. And, um, we got involved in some different things in, in middle school and went our different ways. And, but it was always like, well, Jana will always be there and I you know all of that we and but um we didn't really hang out a whole lot in middle school and high school kind of brought us back together because we were both in marching band and that was a huge thing at our high school um like 400 kids in marching band and um we started hanging out more again during that time and also during that time Jana had um given her life to Jesus and um I noticed a big change in her, and at first I was a little like, I don't know, what's going on there? Um, but then I was really drawn to it, and um, and we started to become a lot better friends through high school as we had, um, you know, similar goals in life and similar interests. And, and um, I think because I had been friends with her and also had gone through so much of life together, you know, like we were in a lot of the same classes, we were in, had a lot of the same interests, and um, and we had gone through so much together already that I kind of felt that loyalty there, even though our friendship wasn't super strong. Um, and 
so I'm really thankful that God kind of kept us woven together. You know what I mean? Even though we weren't um, confiding in each other a lot or things like that, we were we were woven together, and He didn't separate us. And um, and I be, I believe at that time He was building a foundation for something. Um, however, <laughs> then we both went off to college, and we went through one of like we talked about that move, like where you're we're not even in the same place anymore. And this is just funny how God works. He used us being apart to bring us closer together. Um, and when people talk about social media and technology and all of that being evil, I, I don't 100%, 100% agree with that because if it weren't for that, we wouldn't have been able to stay in touch so much. And, um, when we would go back home, we would meet up and have coffee and talk about everything. And um, I just found that if there was anybody in my life that I could talk to about something, it was Jana. And our friendship kind of grew out of all those post high school um, finding yourself. And I gave my life to Jesus after my freshman year of high school or freshman year of college. Sorry. And, um, and we had lots of conversations about that. And um, I saw what loyalty really looks like. Um, I saw uh, constantly, Jana, you know, constantly checking in. How are things going? Remembering things that are going on in my life. And um, God brought us even closer together. And it was through that that I saw that loyalty doesn't have to be in a place it doesn't have to be in a season. We were, we've been in different seasons of our lives throughout all of this. We've been in different places since then. Um, we have Right now we live the furthest away that we ever have. And God keeps showing me that loyalty doesn't have boundaries like we think it does. Um, she has become my closest friend and has been strengthened even more when we go through hard times. When one of us is struggling and we can pray for each other. When one of us, um, you know, I mean that, like, I know she's praying for me, whatever's going on. I know she's checking in on me. Um, I know that, um, despite our miles between us, like a friendship like that, that's built on the Lord and that's built on repeated acts of, um, kindness and showing each other that you matter, um, can't be shaken that easily. Um, and getting to write about her in this book and honor that was just really special to me um, because I got to reflect on our journey to where we are now and um, and just say thank you to her for being there even when you know we weren't as close as as we would have liked to be um, you know girls can be fickle and I was and <laughs> we all go through those those periods of you know, thinking about other, you know, different things, especially middle school. I mean, really middle school, ugh. it's just, it's just a, it's a rough season, but you know, I can even remember things being planted throughout that time that led to our long, long friendship. So now that we've been friends, um, for goodness, almost 20 years, um, God just keeps showing me what loyalty looks like. Um, on his terms and not on mine. Um, like I said before, I, I, I was hurting from, from moving on and, and leaving those friendships, but God really healed me through writing this chapter. Isn't that weird how, you know, he does that, like writing about, um, how Ruth followed in her hurt and out of loyalty and was blessed and how, um, despite moving and losing some friendships, God strengthened others. He's always working in that and always blessing it. And so the challenge from this chapter, because in Craving Connection, it talks about 30 challenges for real life engagement. And some of them are um, as, as simple as just stopping and praying for someone, or um, they can be a, as elaborate as hosting something at your house to honor your friends, but there, I mean, it's a wide range of things all over the board. These chapters and these challenges from these authors are beautiful. And, um, the challenge for, 
from my chapter was just to think about the loyal friends in your life and honor them for it. You know, send them, you know, uh, a gift or a thank you note or a text message. I mean, really, anything that you could do to tell them how much you appreciate their place in your life and how they think of you and bless you, um, that means something to them. And it won't take very much time and energy. And, um, but gosh, it's, it's such a blessing to hear that you matter in someone's life. So do that for someone else. Um, I wanted to um, tell you that sometimes we think that loyalty and friendship has to be shown out of, you know, reciprocation. Like, well, they haven't been a super loyal friend to me, but, you know, right now in this season of our lives, so maybe I better back off and... Um, we can fall into that trap, but what if we looked at it as a chance to extend that loyalty, um, that kindness to a friend that has been there for us in the past, just out of showing them the love of the Lord and, and being there for them. So um, just think about blessing someone in your life with a message today about um, how they've impacted your life and um, I'm... I'm giving a little shout out to someone. I hope they're not embarrassed because I think they are watching. But um, I have a friend um, named Christine. Hello, Christine, if you're watching. Um, who is a friend from um, the old place we lived before we moved. And she has been a constant loyal friend in my life who is constantly making me laugh and praying for me and has been um, not as long as Jana. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't think anybody can touch since second grade, but um, I can't remember a time in my adult life that Christine wasn't encouraging me and blessing me and making me laugh and um, telling me, I've been there, you'll be okay, I'm praying for you, and um, tagging me in high school musical dance videos. <laughs> So, Christine, thank you for being a loyal and loving friend that I will love forever. Um, see? There, I did the challenge on video, and you can do it too. You could even tag someone in the comments on this and tell them how much they mean to you. I saw that Elizabeth did that. Um, she tagged a friend um, telling her how much she appreciates her, and I might cry because that's beautiful. Good job, Elizabeth. <laughs> thank you for doing that. Um, you can do it right now there or, te or text them, but... Um, I just want to challenge you today, even if it was someone that impacted you a long time ago, you can still thank them for the way they blessed you a long time ago. So, um, before we close, cause here I am talking forever and ever, which shouldn't surprise anyone that knows me. Um, I just wanted to pray. And, um, those of you that shared that you're hurting and that, um, you're looking for those friendships again, that you've gone through moves and, and um, you're just longing for that loyalty in your life again, I'm praying for you. And I'm praying for you um, to find that person, um, find those friends in your new place, but also to let God heal up that hurt first um, and help you um, to depend on him um, to fill that hole and then come alongside you with friends um, that will bless you and encourage you where you are. So um, let's pray. Uh, Jesus, we just thank you for this time today to talk about um, the example of friendship and loyalty that you've shown us in your word through Ruth and Naomi. And God, uh, we just thank you that you place people in our lives to um, bless us, to be your hands and feet, um, to um, meet that need for community that you've placed in us. And God, we just thank you for those friends. And God, we pray that you would help us to take the step today to show our appreciation and our gratitude to those women in our lives who have been loyal friends, um, whether it's through word or a gift or um, a hug. Um, help us to make time to connect in that way with the people who have impacted us. And um, God, we just thank you for them right now and ask that you would bless their lives of the people that we're thinking of right now.
God, I just want to pray right now for those that are hurting and that are not seeing this kind of loyalty and friendship in their lives right now. Um, God, we know how painful it can be to lose friendships and to be hurt by other women, um, whether intentionally or just from loss. Um, God, I pray for each of the women right now that are feeling that feeling that you would come in and, and just heal that hurt in their heart, Lord Jesus, that you would help them to feel your comfort and your peace about it, Lord, and that you would give them the courage to seek out that kind of friendship, to be, um, to be the kind of friend that they want to have, Lord, um, to step out in faith, um, in meeting new people and knowing that you will bless that and that you will bring community around them, Lord. And we just pray that you would um, guard and protect our friendships and help them to be a source of encouragement and that um, our friendships would glorify you, Lord, that they would be a light into the world that's full of dissension and, and um, just darkness right now, evil and, and um, arguments and all of that, Lord. Would our friendships just be um, a light and um, point right to you, Jesus. We thank you for the women in our lives and the ones that you're going to bring into our paths. And we just love you and bless you today. In your name we pray, amen. All right, well, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. Go get your copy of Craving Connection. I've made it my goal this year to read one chapter a day of a book, and this would be great one to do that with because each chapter kind of stands alone but then they fit perfectly together so if you don't have craving connection yet grab your copy and i hope you have a wonderful day thanks for joining us